The following program is produced by Project Bait and does not reflect the views of this station. By now, a number of people have heard about the very, very destructive situation that happened on October 29th in Dearborn where Imam Lukman Abdullah, who for years had been working with individuals in his community on the near west side of Detroit, heard the fact that he was shot 18 times by the FBI in a operation which had been ongoing for two years where in effect agents had been placed in his mosque and around his general situation where he was working with the people. Joining us on this edition of For My People is Dawood Walid, and he's with the Council on American Islamic Relations and has been fielding a number of questions and working on this since the situation happened. Tell us about it, Dawood. Hello, Ron, and I'm sure you're uh, very aware of, and I'm sure that some of your uh, audience is also uh, aware of what took place, but there was a very high-profile uh, raid that took place uh, on October 29th, there were 12 uh, people in the Muslim community who were arrested. Uh, and as at this point, they haven't been charged with anything. But uh, during this arrest that, that took place, uh, there was also one of the uh, imams, African American, who was killed. And what the FBI uh, labeled a shootout, uh, what we have since learned from talking with uh, people in law enforcement, uh, officials as well as people at the scene as we've been able to ascertain that uh, one there is no evidence that the imam ever brandished a weapon or pointed or shot at any FBI agents. Uh, two in regards to this situation uh, federal law enforcement admits that not only did their agents have guns drawn but they released dogs on the imam uh, and the dogs came to attack the imam in which the imam uh, then uh, pulled out a, a firearm and shot uh, the dog that was attacking him, which then led to him being shot no less, what we understand, 18 times throughout his body. Um, what also has uh, troubled many people in the community is that after the imam was shot uh, multiple times, not uh, shot to be uh, wounded per se, but it's evident that they were trying to use lethal force to kill him. But it seems that the, that the imam, it appears the F, that the imam was still alive based upon a couple of witnesses who were there as well as his body going to the uh, hospital and, and uh, the imam being handcuffed because we don't, we don't think it would be proper procedure to handcuff a dead body but uh, while this is going on the FBI then airlifted or medevaced their dog who was shot to a veterinarian hospital while the imam did not get uh, even half the, of the, uh, the medical attention as a dog. So this raises uh, serious issues in regards to uh, were the civil rights of Imam Lukman Abdullah violated during this raid uh, in regards to the use of lethal force but also in regards to the uh, medical attention or lack thereof and preference being given to a, a dog which the, of course the FBI is trying to tell the public that the, the dog is a federal law enforcement agent. Um, Another issue relating to the actual raids that were executed was the usage of agent provocateurs in the mosque, where no less than three agent provocateurs, according to the uh, criminal affidavit, went into the mosque for about two years. There was no proof, even according to the, uh, the, uh, the agent provocateurs, that there was any plot of any terrorist activity. Uh, there are no charges, by the way, any accusations that this mosque was involved in any terrorist activity. So it, it appears to be like what the government was looking for um, on the surface wasn't there. So then the Asian provocateurs and stuff, a fake fencing enterprise, who so then tried to entrap some of the members of the mosque to be involved in a, uh, in a uh, bogus uh, fencing operation. So there are many different. Uh, issues we have here in regards to the usage of Asian provocateurs and informants on possible fishing expeditions. We have the case of possible uh, law enforcement en en entrapment. We then have the uh, also in the criminal affidavit uh, trying to scare the public by 
uh, resurrecting the name of Imam Jamil uh, El Amin, aka H. Rap Brown, and Michigan, the, the Black Panther Party is being this radical uh, uh, group that is a, a threat to America, and that these Muslims are really uh, a carryover of the, of the Black Panther Party movement, and that there are radicals trying to overthrow the government. The same type of accusations that were made against the party during COINTEL from the 60s, and then all this culminated uh, in, in the end of these raids with the death of a human being, the death of, um, of, of, of one of our brothers. Let me say this in the short time that we have. Uh, this is um, really odd because I cannot remember uh, any time that an imam, a prayer leader, was actually killed. And that's, that's really significant in the uh, Muslim community nationwide, as significant as I guess it would be that if a minister of a church were shot on Sunday in his pulpit. So where do we go from here? You've called for an independent investigation. What's happening with that? And, and also the, the cases of the individuals who are being tried. Well, right now there's a number of uh, attorneys and people who are in discussion about how can we put together a legal team uh, for these brothers. Uh, there's one attorney who's taken on uh, the case of uh, the wife of the imam, actually, who's a native of Tanzania, and she's being threatened with possible deportation. Uh, we are also, uh, in regards to this, a number of organizations are also calling for an independent investigation uh, from the National Lawyers Guild uh, to uh, all of the mainstream American Muslim organizations have called uh, to this. So we hope to raise this issue uh, in the near future with the Attorney General Holder in regards to a, uh, an investigation. Uh, two, uh, one, the actual killing and the possible civil right of a member of man being violated, but also in regards to review the FBI guidelines that were instituted in the final days of the Bush administration, which basically has a written policy uh, allowing for these types of fishing expeditions. Okay. This has been a discussion with um, Imam Daoud Walid, and uh, he is with the Council on American Islamic Relations. And uh, as you have just heard, this is a situation that is probably not going to go away anytime soon when you talk about uh, this kind of uh, undercover activity. We thank you for joining us on this edition of For My People. If you want to find out about this or any of the other interviews you've seen here today, reach us on our website at projectbait.blackgold.net. That's projectbait.blackgold.net. Hello, I am Heather Johnson, and I am a media intern with Project Bait. Our shows are Business in the Black, as well as For My People. I am so excited to work with this team. I have the honor and pleasure of working with producer David Rambo, who I have admired for years. I also have the wonderful Joe Williams as a co-host, Willie McLeod working behind the scenes with us, Will Amos who helps us with direction, and Tony Curtis Fontana who also works with us as well. We're so excited to be able to talk to you and to all of the viewers and have you watch our shows. We've always been here and we always will. We plan to have a long lasting relationship with our viewers and to continue to have our place in the community. We're always looking for people to be involved with Project Bait. So if you're interested in becoming a media intern, director, you want to work behind the scenes, or you would like to be on camera, feel free to contact us here at Project Bait. If you have a business in Metro Detroit, you should be in the Detroit Black Pages. For info, call 961-3289. That's 961-3289.